It's really the little things that only a man can notice, and that's why you need a genuine male perspective. Get inside a man's mind and know exactly what they notice and like about you. So let Father Alex enlighten you as to what men really value in a woman. Some facts might surprise you, while some others might challenge the way you view men. All right, And if you guys ever want to get a deeper understanding as to male psychology and why men behave the way that they behave, well, you could book a one-on-one -on -one phone call with Father Alex. And there you could book a 10-minute call, 15-minute call, 30-minute call, 45-minute call with me today. I just talked to three people today, ladies and gentlemen. And it works best for whenever you're in a situation where you don't know what to do. You don't know if the person likes you. You don't know whether or not you should make a move or whether or not you should pull away. Sometimes when you're in the middle of it, what's obvious becomes elusive. Right? So that's why you guys need to book a call with Father Alex so that I could bring you guys the enlightenment that you guys need today. Yeah, that's right, people. Just click in the description down below and I'll see you inside. Let's continue with the video. All right, so the first thing is your age. Guys care about your age, so that's why guys notice your age first. And above all, guys are trying to avoid going to prison, all right? Um, so, so when a guy looks at you, that's the first thing they're assessing. How old is she, okay? Now after that, guys will notice the next thing. But the thing is, is that your age, it indicates so much about your compatibility, interests, goals, life stages. And so, and also genetically, guys are wired to observe age. And the first thing people notice with your age is your skin, but that's a, for a whole nother topic, right? So the next one that guys notice is your smile, all right? Guys like a friendly smile. That's why you got to smile a lot. If you don't smile around a guy, it'll make the guy feel insecure. It'll make the guy feel like maybe they're not funny. Maybe you don't like them. If you want to tell a guy that you like them, smile, right? Give it a try. Find somebody that you don't even know. Smile at that guy. Watch him think you like him, right? So that's, a, that's the thing is that you smiling indicates to him that you should keep talking to her, right? So if somebody's approaching you, somebody's trying to flirt with you and you like them back, you don't have to ask their number. You don't have to be too flirty. Just smile and a guy will feel validated for it. Right. Um, the next thing is your body shape. A guy will look for a certain body shape because guys have certain types, right? They got they have certain types because of maybe how they were raised, or maybe their exes, or maybe a woman who had a who was really curvy broke up with him, and as a result, he's into really curvy girl because his ex that he didn't get back is curvy, right? People project. So people, a guy will look for the for a certain body type because guys just have preferences. In Africa, they like the thickness and freaking and freaking. Friends, they like women who are more thinner, right? It just depends. So guys are always looking at the way you look, right? You'll notice a guy, if you don't have a figure in, in the way that you dress, a guy will try to find one. They'll be like looking around. You're like, what the fuck are you looking at? You're like, oh, no, 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 just, 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 just looking around. That's all, right? Um, and above all, body hip to waist ratio is the number one thing that guys like across all cultures. They prefer a woman with a certain with a with that type of body shape across all cultures. Some cultures like blondes, some cultures like women with blue eyes. But the one thing that carries in all culture, like the rice of food, is that curviness, right? Now the next one is attractiveness. Okay, attractiveness. A guy will look at your attractiveness to see whether or not he should be with you. If he thinks you are above his league, he's going to act super needy around you. If he thinks that you he is above your league, he's going to treat you in a very selfish way, right? But if he thinks you guys are equal, he's going to treat you with more respect. How do you know how attractive he sees you? If he thinks you're lower than him, he doesn't put effort. But if he thinks you're above him, you'll notice that he's the one that puts more effort than, than the opposite way around. Right. And the reason why that is, is because most guys, I'm like guys don't want to be with a woman who's uh, who's below them. And if they are, what you'll notice is that they hide you from their friends and family. You want to know why? Because guys get made fun of when they date below their league. They get made fun of. Remember, I had one time a friend of mine, man, he dated. He, I feel so bad. I was, I was such an asshole a few years ago when I was younger. Honestly, I, I look back at my life. I'm like, dude, I don't know how, how the hell you didn't get shot. I remember my friend, he got me into photography and, and I remember I said something about his girlfriend because his girlfriend, like so this dude Sebastian, was really good looking. He was really good looking, and uh, and he he was dating this girl, and this girl was she wasn't she 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 wasn't like he was above her league. Let's just put it that way. She like he she he was so good looking compared to her that my. My my judgmental self at that time was like, what's wrong with him? And I think a few times by mistake, I think I told him like, yo. You know, like, we, I can't get a girl, right? That's crazy. I know, right? And then one day, I, I, a few years later, I was, I really felt bad for being an asshole to a lot of people. So I was sending apologies to people. I was like, hey, man, I remember one time I said that white power word, my fault. It was a joke. 
And I remember I went to him. I was like, hey, Sebastian, um, remember that one time when I told you that your girl was ugly? I was really fucked up. And he was like, I don't remember you saying that. I was like, I was like, oh, what, what I'm sorry now. <laughs> People, you, you got to understand, man. Like something was wrong with me at that time. All right. I was a very different person. Okay. I was the type of person that you came for honesty. If you want to honesty, you came to me. And that was a problem, man. It was unbelievable, man. Anyways, let's let's move on to the next one. The next one is trustworthiness. <laughs> Speaking of trustworthiness, trustworthiness, yes, it means we don't want you to be a sneaky girl that goes behind my back and bangs my friend, right? That's one thing. But also trustworthiness is how trustworthy are you with kids? Do you have, do, do, am I afraid to leave my kids with you? In other words, paternal, your paternalness. Guys like women who have a paternal, a trustworthy, leaving with your kids type of vibe, like the babysitter type of look, right? Or the babysitter type of vibe the innocence the nurturing guys like that and the way that women tend to not show that is they say they hate kids they hate animals they treat vulnerable they treat like they don't like animals right and it's kind of like listen to me man if you don't want kids something wrong with that at least like animals or kids because outside of that if you if you don't give up that vibe you're, you're gonna give up that untrustworthy vibe like i can't trust you around my kids Right. Um, and so it says men assess how caring and trustworthy you seem, particularly around children. You notice this by how she keeps herself, her habits, whether or not she's emotionally stable. Right. You don't want a psycho chick taking care of your kids. You might fucking shake that shit. Right. And I remember I was anyways. Yeah. Next one is dominance, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Now, dominance is pretty much your level of masculinity. Right. Um, if you have too much masculinity, it's actually untrustworthy to a guy. Right. That's why guys are not trustworthy. Because there's a danger aspect to them. So dominance is something that you don't, too much dominance you don't want. Some dominance is good to keep respect, but too much dominance. Um, some dominance is actually a turn on for guys, but too much dominant, terminated mode, pick up my shit, that type of energy, it's not good, right? Um, and usually you tend to see that in women who are really career oriented, who are really liberal, you tend to be more, you tend to see more dominance in those areas. I mean, guys just prefer a woman who's not that dominant. Honestly, it's just, you know, it's just how guys are. They prefer more of a meek woman, um, as opposed to the guys who want a dominant woman are the guys that you are going to get turned off by. Like, you're not, they're not fucking you. They're, you're fucking them. You know, like, they're, uh, they're like, um, um, princess, can, can I take off your bra? Like, they're that type of guy, you know? Um, so it, 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 if you have too much masculinity, you're going to attract feminine guys. If you like that, that's totally fine. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, the next one is facial attractiveness. Right, a guy will notice he sees you at the bar one night, and then he sees you in the morning. And something changed, people. Guys notice that, right? And the thing, and and that's why, like with the makeup, no makeup, guys notice that type of stuff, and guys look for that. They want to see how, 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 what is your lowest point attractiveness, right? At the lowest, how do you look in the morning, right? Um, and guys like that, and guys love it that when you wake up in the morning. They're still there, right? They're like, oh, it's her. <laughs> Woo! There was an episode of Seinfeld where he dated this girl. And she looked different depending on the light that he had, right? So he saw her in one light. He was like, oh. But then he saw her in another light. He was like, oh, come over, come over, right? And one, uh, and yeah, anyway. So yeah, facial attractiveness. And it changes. It fluctuates, right? And guys will notice that. So if you're going out with a guy, I can promise you, he'll, he'll notice, okay, this is how she looks with makeup. Oh, this is how she looks without makeup. And they make a judgment out of that. And they like it when you look good with the, without makeup. And that's why it's important to show a guy how you look without makeup from time to time. Right. Um, they it's a it's it's also a sign that you're getting comfortable with them. So that's it's kind of like a very good thing. Now the next thing is your outlook on life. And this is something that people could tell that by the way you talk. Oh fuck these guys. Guys are not trustworthy. Oh, guys are horrible. Well, guess what? If guys are not trustworthy to you, what do you think you're gonna be to me? Yeah, I'm not gonna be trustworthy to you, right? You don't want someone who who's positive, who who has a positive outlook on life because they're not, they're gonna age you better. Right, somebody who's negative, they're gonna age you prematurely. And the way you notice that is just the way they talk, the way they talk about their life. They're always the victim. They're never wrong. They never fucking apologize. All that type of stuff is an indication of their outlook on life. And you want someone who has a positive outlook on life, man. I'm telling you, man. Um, and and if if you go for someone who has a negative outlook, it's simply because they're hot or you're desperate. Positive outlook is the most important thing. I will not be with a woman who has a negative outlook. Absolutely not. They're going to age me. Next one. Success levels. 
I personally don't mind a woman who's successful. The only problem is that successful women are very extroverted, have a lot of friends and that kind of stuff. And with guys, that's deemed untrustworthy, right? Too much success to a guy is untrustworthy. Why? Because when you have a lot of success, you have a lot of power. Power revolves around people being revolved around you, meaning meeting a lot of people and interacting with them on, on a daily basis. Guys just don't have that much confidence to deal with a woman like that. That is problematic, right? Me personally... I don't mind dating a woman who's successful in one area. I wonder why? Because it's kind of like, I want to learn from you. Like, honestly, like my dream when I was in college was dating a girl who was a better artist than me because then I could learn from her, right? I was, I, I, I genuinely do not mind. Um, I genuinely don't mind a woman who earns more than me, even when I was younger. But the problem is, is that some guys I've heard, I've heard that they just, they get insecure. Like they really get angry at that shit. In fact, it turns them off. Like their dicks literally like cry like uh, right like they they experience more erectile dysfunction women who are more successful in fact women who win elections tend to be tend to experience divorce at a quicker rate it's just that guys get intimidated by that man and and guys just it's, it's just how guys are man i don't know what to tell you people next one is your hair all right your hair guys prefer women with long lustrous hair now it just depends what they're looking for also if they're looking for some action they have a certain propensity to go for shorter more vibrant hair colors right they they they, they so so a guy who's looking for more stability will go for more monochromatic hair right black more straightforward right and, and longer but when the guy's more to having fun they go for more shorter with more colorful type of hair and long hair is seen as feminine and short hair is seen as masculine and this is where the trustworthy is. If you want to appear more trustworthy, have longer hair. If you want to appear more motherly, have longer hair. If you're in the business world and you want to be respected, cut that shit off, right? If you want, if you want people to treat you more like a as as less feminine but more with respect, cut the hair. It'll it'll give you more of a masculine look to you. And if your goal is to succeed in life in terms of like money and power, shorter hair because it mimics men, right? Guys are visual creatures, like. Like they, the short something about short hair, you know, is they just respect more, right? It's 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 one of those things, all right. Um, and also, short hair usually indicates, and this is um, you know, it's because I studied this, you know, it usually indicates an emotional transition, right? Um, when look, when, if you see Father Alex cutting his hair, he's going through shit. I, I'm just gonna every time I cut my hair, something happened. I broke up. Think about it. How when guys go to the bar barber, like, oh man, I feel like shit, man. I, 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 but then they go to the barber and they come out feeling amazing, right? Cutting your hair has a boost and a changing identity. It, it cha it, it's, it's one of those things that it's like the Monday or the new year of your hair, of your body, where if you cut it, you feel like you have permission to act differently. You, it's like the Monday. You, you rather start a new habit on a Monday than a Friday, right? Because it just feels like a new start. Like babies, when babies are born, they're bald. It's almost like a new beginning. When you go into the army, they cut your hair. It gives you the ability to take on a new identity. Like cutting hair is symbolic. It's like a sacrifice, but with the hair, right? So that's why it's your hair says a lot. And, and so it, depending on the impression you want to give to a guy, cut the hair. Now, the next one is eye contact, okay? Um, people, okay, um, nothing says you're a psycho than your eyes, all right? Um, if you have crazy psycho eye contact, you're going to, it's honestly, I've seen it. I sensed it. I've seen the demons. When the woman looks at you like with the fucking eye contact, what it does is that it kind of like, it, it, you could kind of sense like, okay, this person, some, something's off with this person, you know? And the, the problem when people feel like there's something off with you, they people don't don't really respect people who have something off about them. They don't really take them seriously, right? Um, and so that's why you got to learn how to relax those freaking eyes, man, honestly. Like, you can't be, you know, giving the freaking Father Alex psycho eyes. Like, you got to relax the eyes, relax your face. If you're really stressed, going through a difficult period, what you'll notice, tension in the face will come naturally. It, it just will come naturally. You'll be like this, like stressed out. Because stress, the emotions of stress, um, or in, or in any emotion at its at its subtle level affects the tiny muscles of the body. The more intense the feeling, the bigger muscles it recruits. So it's, for example, when you're really nervous, it'll attack, it'll, you'll feel it in the fingers. So you'll notice you'll fidget a little. But the more nervous you get, the more bigger muscles it'll it'll start to take over, right? So it's the same thing. When you have an underlying insecurity, this underlying insecurity is, a, is very subtle, but it's noticeable in the face in ways you cannot tell. It's like somebody with bad posture. They don't notice they're having bad posture until somebody calls them out. So this tenseness 
over time will become permanent for, to some people. And it'll bro broadcast to people your emotional history. The way to do that is relaxing your face. Relax the face. Just relax the face and relax the, 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 the top part or practice meditation, okay? I mean, seriously, that's the one thing that will teach you how to not have those creepy eyes. Now, the next one is skincare, all right? And good skin shows youth while lesions and pimples can be concerned. But look, this is just environmentally, right? But humans are wired to, to imagine that there's something more to it, even though nowadays it's really no big deal. But guys do notice that. This is why with, with this is why it's like, I don't, I don't go too much into it, right? Because, you know, I'm, I'm a guy. This is one of the only topics I don't go into too much. But guys don't like too much makeup, okay? Um, and a lot of makeup ruins your, your skin in the long run. So just got to be careful with that. And I'll tell people that meditation does increase the health of your skin, right? Meditating will keep your face looking young for a longer period of time. Um, how do you know that? Well, look at Father Alex. What the fuck? Like, I've been saying this ever since I started meditating. I've literally told people, like, my friends, I'm like, look, bro, I found this shit. Keeps you young. Give it a try, you know? And they didn't listen, but I did it for the last 15, 20 years, I don't know, and it's been working out. So that's why I tell people, meditate. It's one of the best ways to keep your health, your skin healthy. Meditation is sexy, people, okay? Now, next one is symmetry. Symmetry is pretty much how symmetric your face is. Now, you don't have to be completely symmetric because if you are completely symmetrical, you're going to look what they call uncanny, like an AI photo. It looks too perfect. People don't like that. It's freaking creepy, okay? Um, the symmetry that I'm talking about is the healthy symmetry that happens because you have a good immune system. Um, and that happens when you're in the womb, either your parents didn't drink and, and, and maybe your parents were happy, right? All of those things, when your parents have you and they're in a good state of mind, they're not stressed out, it increases the likelihood your kids don't come out ugly people. Okay. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like if somebody's pissing you off and you have a baby, you'll be like, look, man, don't piss me off or else it's going to come out ugly. All right. Sorry, people. But yeah, man, don't be getting stressed out, man, because it does affect the kids. But generally speaking, though, um, your symmetry, if you have bad symmetry, it says bad health. It's just that simple. In fact, you notice attractive people, if you really look at their biomarkers, they're more healthy than people who have less symmetry in the face. Because it takes a healthy immune system for everything to come out perfectly when you're when you're in the womb. Now the next one is your status, people. Now not as much as with men, as not as much as with men, but your status matters. Um, status cues such as with men, it's a little different like cars, but for women is such as jewelry and that and and the clothes that kind of stuff. It shows your status. Now to guys, I'll be honest with you, most guys really don't give a fuck. Honestly, like you can be rich. We don't give a fuck, but we'll notice that you're rich, come from a rich family. But I've never, well, dudes, well, I've known dudes who liked rich girls for, for them to take care of them. But I always look at those guys. I'm like, come on, bro. That's, that's pathetic. Anyways, man. The next one is promiscuity, people. Um, promiscuity. Now, guys test your promiscuity simply because they need to know whether or not you're trustworthy, unfortunately, because guys and women don't trust promiscuous women. That's, that's just the, the truth of it. Now, it really does depend. The, the level of what promiscuity is depends on where you are. So if you are in New York City, if, for example, and you sleep with a guy before the third day, for example, it's no big deal. But if you're freaking Timbuktu or Africa and you sleep with a guy on the fifth date, like you, you're about to get stoned, right? So it's so it, so being promiscuous truly does depend on context, right? So if everyone is outside showing skin, then you wearing skin does not give you a promiscuous vibe. But generally speaking, um, guys assess your level of promiscuity by how fast you sleep with them, by how quick you let them make a move. And even though the guy wants to sleep with you, the fact that you don't let him makes him gain respect for you, right? But also, he, he does want to sleep with you, but if you do sleep with him, he's going to judge you. It's a, it's a double-edged sword, right? Now, like I said, it truly does depend on where you are and the kind of guy you're dealing with. If you're, if you're me, de dealing with a guy and you sleep with him on the third day, for example, he judges you, calls you promiscuous, for example, well, then that's not the type of person you want, right? Because that's a very judgmental person. And the reason why most guys will not want to like make a promiscuous woman a a partner is because of paternity certainty, right? Um, men are wired to be suspicious of women who sleep around a lot because if you have their kid in prehistoric days, those prehistoric thoughts, you wouldn't know if your kid was yours, 
right? That prehistoric baby could be prehistoric Bob's baby rather than prehistoric Tyrone's baby, right? And so it, uh, it, it created a problem. Now we have paternity certainty because we could put a, 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 a DNA test, but back then you didn't. So the only way to do that is to date the woman who appeared to be less promiscuous, right? And usually you judge promiscuity by the level of comp uh, your compulsiveness, how fast you fall in love, right? How quick you are getting to, to get physical with a person. But remember, guys are sexual hypocrites. You see, guys are sexual hypocrites. So I know it doesn't make sense because that's just how guys are. Next point. Uh, body type, right? Guys have a certain body type. Some guys like tall women. Some like guys like curvy women. Some guys like women who have no curves, <laughs> right? What the fuck? Um, some guys like big butts. Some guys like big boobs. Some guys like fake boobs. Some guys like big fake butts, right? It just depends. So guys will look at that. And let me tell you something, my love. Okay. Let me tell you something. If a guy tells you to put on some plastic surgery so that he can love you, don't do that shit. All right. Any guy that tries to encourage you to do plastic surgery, it's toxic to the motherfucking max. Don't do that shit and tell people you watch my channel. Next one, man. The smell, people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the only thing in life that I've ever been turned off by a woman. And that was her hair smell. I think there was even an episode of Seinfeld where a woman had a had bad sm had bad smell and he got turned off by her too. I don't know what it was. She was this beautiful Eastern European girl from one of those hot hot countries, right? And I think it was some Uzkan, some shit like that. And I don't know what it was. I gave her a hug, and the smell just hit me like a like a ton of brick. I couldn't believe it. And in that moment, I instantly friend zoned her. And this girl. For some reason, the smell just got to me. So it's like you you have to, you cannot be stinking. Now, there are certain smells that are permissible. For example, in France, okay? When I was in France, I could not believe that the Pepe Le Pew shit is a real thing. People don't wear deodorant over there. They really don't. So I had to get used to smelling girls deep B.O. <laughs> so like, I was like, look, man, whatever. <laughs> right? Right? And remember one, one girl once I dated, the cannibal chick, she had like fucking... Her birth stink, but she was not, you know. So, there are some things you forgive. Hair, I don't, BO, yeah, you know. And now, this is a problem though. When I really think about it, she had a taste, she she wanted to taste a human, right? She never did it according to her, but that, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, she likes she wanted to taste human and she had a bad smell. Shit. Next one. All right. Um, listening skills. Okay. By the way, go, let's go back to the smell. Um, if, if, that's why you have to have good smell. Good smell, people. Now, for me, Father Alex, I don't wear deodorant, right? But I, you know, I don't smell. Hopefully, I don't smell. I, I just have a natural smell. Um, when you're not stressed, you don't smell. That's how that works. I don't, I don't wear perfume. Maybe I should. Maybe you know, I bet women were like, "Why the fuck doesn't this guy have perfume?" I mean, cologne. I just never liked it. I don't know why. And, and you know what? Most guys wear perfume around their face and shit. I don't. Maybe that's why Father Alex doesn't have as many wrinkles. Okay? So that's that's one thing, right? All right, so the next one. Um, listening skills. If I... I don't mind... When I'm talking to people, I love listening to people. But I'm very wary of people who never ask me questions about me, who are never curious enough. Um, you gotta have the an interest in what I have to say. Jesus Christ, am I that boring to you? Right? Um, but some women just never develop that listening skill because they were just too good looking. They never felt the need to impress you with their words and listening. And, and usually it's also, it's one of those things that a guy will judge you on your listening skills because when you're in a relationship with them, if they, if they feel depressed and sad and you don't have good listening skill, that's a sign that this relationship is not going to work, right? Um, and also it's an indication of your lack of narcissism. And guys like a woman who's who's more willing to listen because guys like to talk about themselves, man. You got to make the guy feel like what he has to say is really interesting and matters, even though it doesn't, right? The women that I like the most are the ones that made me feel like I was really smart around them, honestly, right? Even though I know that they're paying more attention, it still feels nice to be listened to, you know, and, and to, for people to say, oh, wow, I like, I like what you have to say. And just like with guys as well, okay? So yeah, that's one thing. Now the next one is your language. Guys do not like weak body language. Healthy guys don't like weak body language. Guys who want to take advantage of you, look for weak body language so that they could be with you. But when a woman shows strong, masculine, some masculine body language, which is chest up like that, right? A strong, healthy guy will be attracted to that. A guy who's toxic will not look for that. In fact, they'll be repelled by it, right? Um, so that's why you have to learn how to have that strong body language. And unfortunately, if you're alone a lot, 
and you're not around people, you're going to develop a bad body, body posture. And how do you develop good body posture? Meditate. Like back erect, meditation, like that. Like it's, it's really a thing. You, most likely your back muscles are weak. When I go to meditation retreats, we do this for 12 hours a day like that. Out. Fucking wild, man. It's kind of crazy because I think of myself as someone who doesn't have discipline. But like I tell people some of the shit that I do, and, and it's kind of like the Lexus, it's your self image, your self image hasn't caught up to, to who you are today. I still think myself who I was 10 years ago or 15 years ago as like somebody who who is like untalented and like, you know, so I still think I have no discipline. When in reality, when I really should look at, I really do. It's kind of crazy. Um, it's like the hot girl who's hot now, but was poor. Was a fucking god, oh, Alex calling himself a girl. Next one, voice softness. People, we want a soft, feminine voice. Nothing is. Oh my lord, nothing is more soothing than a soft, feminine voice. I remember one time I was going through a a really bad time, and the girl that I was with, I wasn't talking about it because I was. It, I was. I, she didn't know I was using drugs at that time, and so I was really. I was coming out of it, and I was like almost like when you're hung over, but like, you're just dissociated. And I was really depressed. And she, and, and, and then she was like, yo, Delex is like, she was like, Delex is, is, are you okay? Like, it's almost, it, and I felt like I was like, like in a dream. And she was like saying, are you okay, Delex? What's going on? Why aren't you responding? And her softness, the worry and the voice just comforted me. You know, it was it's just a soft, I suppose, nigga, wake the fuck up, bitch. I'm like, come on. Like, you know what I'm saying? You'd be surprised how many women do this shit who are like, man, wake up, man up, little bitch. Like, you know, like from New York City, these Bronx girls with Timberland boots, the fuck? You gotta have a soft feminine voice. You know, it's guys are wired to react to a soft feminine voice, people. And nothing's more. I remember I was dating, not dating, but I was trying to get with this girl, but she had a deep voice. She was like, hey, man. I was like, whoa. Like, hey, this is uh, this is weird as shit. Like this super feminine girl, but her voice was deep. Father Alex forgives, as you guys know, but <laughs> but you know, like it, I cannot imagine. She's like, oh, Delexus, we ain't doing that, girl. It's best. Let's just put the mute button. Next one, um, kindness to others. Nothing, honestly, nothing is sexier than the, this is. A, ask any guy. Nothing sexier than the woman holding a baby or smiling at a baby. Something about it, or even a puppy. Second, it comes second, right? Simply because it shows a nurturing side, and guys want even the manipulators want a nurturing woman. <laughs> you know, every guy wants that because it means that when you're weak, she's gonna be there for you. You know, so that's why if you don't like animals or children, don't fucking say that shit. Don't do not verbally say that, okay? Because it's guys will internally judge you on that. They want to think that you want to rescue every puppy in the fucking puppy mill, people, all right? Uh, especially with children. Now, the next one is flirtiness. You know, the type of woman that flirts with everyone to the point that it makes every guy want to ask for her number because they think she was flirting with them. Usually, women like this tend to tended to have an inappropriate relationship with their father where they flirted with their fathers and it was it wasn't negative but it was just too inappropriate and so they equate getting attention from men by being flirty and charming and that's problematic because as a guy you're gonna have a problem with that it's like you're gonna be you're gonna feel insecure because she just flirts with everyone and every guy's gonna think they're trying to hit on them and so every guy's gonna hit on her simply because they think they're flirty um, some women just have that flirty personality and you don't want to have that you you don't want to look like you're a good flirt people okay stop it with the flirtiness stop being super friendly with everyone learn to be polite because when you come across as though you're hitting on everyone it makes guys feel insecure right you want to give more shy energy if you want to look like a wifey material now if you want to look like more like a fun girl or adventurous then yes you want to be flirty it truly does depend on what the guy's looking for to be honest with you now the next one is cleanliness of your apartment all right and it's simply because it just indicates bad habits bad personal hygiene like you know i remember one time i, was, I went out with this girl and she had a really dirty apartment y'all would think oh my god father Alex, you found your match shut up okay it wasn't my match okay because even i was uncomfortable it was, it was, I was like, yo, where's the cat? I hear it purr. Where's, you know, like it's unbelievable. This chick, and then, and then she was like, I'm sorry. It's sorry. It's a little messy, a little messy. Like this is like a TV show worth worthy. It's unbelievable, man. It was crazy. Like crazy, man. But I forgive. <laughs> Father Alex forgives. It's Father Alex, right? Look, this depends on the guy, right? Some guys will not tolerate this shit from you, right? Some guys will not tolerate dirty people. Some guys are more tolerant. But it, it does give off feminine energy when you're clean, right? So guys will notice that. 
Now, the next one is personality type, extroverted, introverted. Um, most guys in a woman, when it comes to a partner, prefer an introverted girl. And this is a very obvious thing. You could tell when someone is introverted by just the first few times talking to them, right? They'll notice whether or not you're, you're nerdy, you're social, you're tough, that kind of stuff. And the reason why is because some guys look for certain compatibility. If, if the guy is outgoing, they'll prefer a, an extroverted girl. People prefer the opposites. You don't want to date someone who's intro introverted when you're introverted. Date the opposite. If you're extroverted, go with an introverted person. It's just more compatible, right? You don't want competition between the two extroverts. Get what I'm saying? Um, me, I have a pers I have a two-sided personality where I am extro introverted, but also extroverted. Usually more extroverted, but I have a deep introverted side that most guys will go for the extra for the introverted girl. Simply because extroverted girls create more insecurities. You know more people. That means you you there's a possibility you know you you have a tyrone in your life, people. Guys want to deal with friends. They prefer to date the loser chick over the successful one. I am telling you. They prefer to date the girl who lives with mom and who's waiting for her husband than the freaking terminated girl. On top of the Eiffel Tower, telling people what to do. Next one. Her personal style, the way she dresses. This is actually big, man. I like the chicks who 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 have the, the hipster type of energy simply because mm, it's part of my toxicity, right? Because hipster chicks are not consistent. Hipster chicks are always moving around. Hipster chicks are open to experience. That's never a good quality for stable relationships because it's tell. That desire for new also extends to the sexual, also where they might get, they might want more things, right? And usually, there's an, in the, you show your personality through the way that you dress. You could kind of tell how I am by the way that I dress, right? Like I might dress formal, but you could tell that I dress formal in an informal way, right? Um, which kind of tells about my personality. If you know me, you kind of know that I am kind of like that, right? So you kind of your personal style. If you go on a date. And you dress super conservative, you're pretty much telling him no poom poom for you tonight, right? But if you're dressing super, you know, lascivious and and then and showing the goods, right? You're 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 in, you're enticing something out of the guy, right? And the guy's kind of like, you know what? Maybe I could give it a try. But when I'm on a date with a girl and she looks like she just she just came out of fucking an Amish church, and 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 she just came out of culto, and now she's coming over to meet me, I'm like, okay, you know what? With this chick, I'm I got I got, I'm gonna take my time with her a little bit more, right? Simply because of the way that you dress. The way that you dress is telling people how to treat you. Dress professional, people will treat you professionally, right? Dress provocatively and men will, will, will react in such a way, right? Um, it, even, it, it, even, it even reflects a, person, a woman's ovulation. Like, it just does. Like, all these things says a lot in your personal style. What does Father Alex prefer? I'll be honest with you, man. Some guy, my, like, I have a guy friend who, who, is, who is into, like, when women dress, like, like office wear, right? I find that boring as fuck, man. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, man. Take that off. Your vibe. Your vibe is everything put together. The creepy look that you give, right? The energy, how you dress, the whole shebang of bang. How interested you are, um, or not how interested you are, whether or not there's something wrong with you. And usually when your thoughts, words, and actions don't align, you give up creepy vibe. For example, let's just say I'm trying to scam you. Right, I'm trying to be nice to you, but also I have ulterior motives. My hesitation as I'm talking about my scam to you, yeah, you know, you could you could make a lot of money. It's five hundred thousand. I don't believe it. Right, my hesitation will make you say, you know what, something's off. He's not congruent. His words, thoughts, and actions are not lining up. Unless you're a psychopath and everything lines up, and it'll give off a creepy vibe. When you meet someone, you really like them, but you're trying to hide that you like them. People can sense this is an incongruent. Always remember. The self is coming through. If you feel nervous and insecure, no matter how much you try, it's going to come through. It's best to show your insecurities out, out in the open so that it doesn't come out repressed. And people will actually find it more endearing and relaxing, right? But when you hold it in and you try to act confident, a man will perceive that as fake, as insecure. And you, without even knowing it, you'll turn people off because you're trying to hide your weaknesses, your insecurities. Never try to hide your insecurities, man, because the way you hide it always turns people off. Like, trust me, I, Father Alex knows about that, people. Um, so your vibe. And the best way to have a nice vibe is to be willing to walk away. And don't be so desperate for their attention. It'll, your natural personality comes out when you're outcome, depend, outcome independent. Now, the next one is your laughter, people. Laugh at their jokes, people. What the fuck? Like, even if, they, you, why are you looking at them like you're a damn Terminator at a comedy show? Like, look at the, the smile. I have dated women who don't even, who don't laugh at my jokes. I'm like, I'm like, whoa, what the, like, I get I'm not that funny, but give me a chuckle. 
ha ha motherfucker like something you know and it's kind of like and 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 when you laugh don't don't be giving the the, the truckers laugh oh like no like have a cute laugh like he he you know <laughs> like you could practice that you know like practice the he he it's guys like that guys like cute laughs you know now look if you're if you got a funny laugh that's totally fine but the whole point people laugh all right like a lot of people are very in their face they just like that, especially neurodivergent people. You got to learn to smile from time to time. It's very, nothing's prettier than a happy girl. You know, guys like happy women. Next one is voice tone. The softness. Don't be going too harsh, not too fast. Don't be speaking too fast. Slow the fuck down. Learn to speak in a slower and relaxed way with patience. Guys notice that and it says confidence. Guys notice that and they are drawn to that. They are drawn to a soft, slow, feminine voice. Never hurried. The next one is your red flags. Guys, notice your red flags, right? Now, depending on his self-esteem is how much he's going to ignore it. And depending on how attractive you are. The more attractive you are, the more they ignore your red flags. Men notice your red flags, man. But... It just depends on how much they like you that they ignore. It. And that's why, unfortunately, if you're a really attractive woman, you're never going to get the feedback until you get older. Actual feedback, you're never going to get until you get older. And by that point, it's, it's really difficult to learn what you're supposed to do because so, you, you've been getting false feedback. In other words, the way that you treat people, you don't get that same reflection because of your looks, right? So you got to realize that when you, that a guy will look at your red flags, which sometimes is how you dress. Sometimes is how is how you talk about your exes, that kind of stuff, your relationship history, the shit that you tolerated, the shit that you did to try to control them, like all that type of stuff, right? Um, if, if you know, like it's it's like for example, if I'm with a girl and I knew that she was in a relationship with a guy that always, I, I can't be with you. You want to know why? Because you're used to that. You're gonna find me boring. You're, you're gonna find my affable, relaxed nature as weak. And not strong. It's like, oh, he ain't cute. He ain't strong. He doesn't smack. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. You know, like he doesn't. He doesn't put me in my place. Like seriously, like you reframe abuse as love. And when I'm not giving you that, you're gonna say I'm boring. And then you, you know, so fuck that shit, man. Go back to that guy, not me, man. Um, next one is how many friends you have. Like, like I said, and the, and the kind of friends you have. If all of your friends are 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 strippers and 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 and, and whopping and dapping and shit, right? The guy's going to say, okay, is that how you are? You know, if all of your friends are getting around and doing raves and coke, molly, all that shit, the guy's going to say, okay, is that is that how you are too? A healthy guy. Now, if he's a toxic guy, if you met me a few weeks, a few, maybe even a few months ago, we're like, oh, ready to that, bitch. Let's go party. But that's because you're toxic. Okay? You don't want that type of guy. You want the type of guy that when he sees th that, he gets a little turned off because they want something more reliable, right? Now, if that's what he wants, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not even going to judge. I'm judging, right? I sound so holier than thou. Me a few months ago. The fuck? Watch me go back to that shit, right? So, so yeah, like if, so if your friends are cheating and, and you have cheating friends, a guy will notice that and he'll get turned off. But if all of your friends pray, if all of your friends wear Jesus in their, in their neck, if all of your friends look like they're just coming out of an Amish church, you know, a guy who wants something stable will be attracted to that, right? Um, now, a guy who's dumb may not notice that, right? And a guy who's dumb may think that that's not important. The next one is how you talk about your ex. People, anytime somebody talks negatively about your ex, yes, your ex sucked, but why the fuck were you with them in the first place? Why the hell you tolerated that shit? You can't say they're a bad person and not exclude yourself who tolerated that because you were part of the chaos, right? So if... If they talk really bad about their exes, how they and how they and they and they talk as though they they never did anything wrong, that's a red flag, and a guy will notice that type of stuff. You're always a victim, never the perpetrator. How is that possible? You know, the next one is how they relate to their fathers. For some reason, is number twenty nine people. You know, how they talk about their fathers is vitally important. If they talk negatively about their fathers, just realize they're going to look, they're going to see something negative in you too because you are an archetype of a man and the foundation of how they, of how she sees a man and how she treats men is with their father. Um, So you want to have a, you give off the impression that, you know, y'all are not going to Jerry Springer together trying to fix your problems, you know? Healthy men want a woman with a healthy relationship with their father. So they're going to explore that. They're going to see that. If you don't trust your dad, you're not going to trust me. If you hate your dad, you're going to have some hatred towards me as well, you know? Now, predators, predators want a woman because she's more easily manipulated. Now, the next one is self-control. For some reason, it's 29 again, people. Now, self-control is 
the most is the number one thing that indicates success in life. It's the number one thing that indicates whether or not you're going to cheat. It's, it's, it's everything self-control. A woman with low self-control is a woman with low self-esteem. It's that simple. Low self-esteem comes with low self-worth. And a woman with low self-worth comes across as a flax. A guy will notice your, your lack of self-control and it'll, it'll tell him everything you need to know. Why? Because if you, if you lack self-control and you like a guy, but you have a boyfriend, you might cheat. You might cheat, you know? So you got to develop that. How do you develop that? Through a meditation practice. And last but not least is how she deals with conflict. And this is, this is, this is, this one I, I, is, for me is important because for me is very important simply because if, if you don't know how to deal with conflict, you're never going to grow together. Relationships don't grow through pleasure. They grow through fi finding issues with each other, talking it out, resolving it, and then making up again. And that is it, almost like an upward spiral. The more shit you guys go through, the more shit you guys resolve, the more you guys like each other. It's almost like a like a like a like an army that's proven in battle. Each time it battles, they get closer together, right? It's 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 conflict proof, battle proof, stress proof. When you are someone who cannot handle conflict, in other words, they can't handle responsibility, they can't admit that they're wrong, they can't be honest about their mistakes. Um, they don't listen to you when you have problems. Um, when you present to them problems, they that rather than listen to you, they gaslight you. If you can't do that, you guys will never grow because you grow through conflict. Peace after the conflict. But if you never have that conflict, you guys are never really going to have that makeup love, right? You're never going to have that makeup hug. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing better than fighting with someone and then finding, an, finding a solution and then making it and, and then just hugging each other out because of that. Humans are meant to bond after conflict. It is the love hormone, oxytocin. Each time you guys have problems and fix it, you guys love each other more because you see a new side. But if this woman, oh, sorry, sounds like I'm talking. I'm mean, Honestly, that's how my mom is, people. I'm just going to be honest with you. My mom, she doesn't really, she doesn't really like to admit that she's wrong. And it's, 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 it's really annoying. You know, what can you say? I mean, she, she wants you to apologize and doesn't apologize. She doesn't have good conflict skills, to be honest with you. And, and that's why I put that here, because it's kind of like if you're not willing to admit your mistakes, how the hell are you going to grow with someone? You just wanted one sided relationship. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, the best relationships I've had problems with, but we talked it out. We talked it out. And it's, it just felt like I was like, you know what? This, I really like this person because I'm able to get criticized, first of all, and listen. But also, she takes criticism too. That's awesome, you know. So you got to, and and you can't do that with a narcissistic person. So how you handle crit criticism, how you handle when people call you out on your bullshit matters. You can't have too much of an ego with this, right? Um, and and if you can't handle conflict, you can't handle being in a relationship. It's just that simple. We're not about. We're not be here about how to be right. We're here about how to grow together, right? And if you if you want to learn how to apply these strategies in your life, people, you want to work with Father Alex. Click in the description down below, people, or else I'm closing the channel. I ain't kidding. Things are going good. I could close it today. All right? And look, if you guys want to apply these strategies more, but you feel like the videos are too short, if you guys enjoy this video, check out Become Part of the Mindful Attraction University, people. For example, for people who are single, for people who struggle getting commitment, for people who struggle keeping somebody interested long term, for people who struggle with making communication and, and, and conflict resolution, I have a course for all of that. Of course, for people who are single, check out the Psychological Agreement of Attraction. For people who are in relationships, check out Natural Chemistry. It's a course on how to build and, and make a guy who's already committed commit more. If you want a, a, a course on how to build your emotional resilience, check out Emotional Mastery. If you want a course on how to build charisma and you, and you want to be a boss bitch, check out the Charisma Blueprint. If you want a course on how to embrace your feminine energy and you want almost like a self-help course from Father Alex on how to achieve your goals, how to set them, how to manifest the manifestation technique that I use, how to blend the masculine and the feminine, how to allow yourself to be feminine, feminine without being taken advantage of, how to gain respect from anyone despite your femininity, that's the course for you. Purchase the description down below. All of my courses are $99. Or you can become part of Mindful Attraction University, taught by Professor Alex. And you could be right in front of me right here where I teach you virtually. Hey, is that you, Quintisha? You got a question? Do you have a question, Tyrone? Do you have a question, Melissa? It could be one of you people. So just click on the description down below where it says purchase the Mindful Attraction University. And I'll see all. Oh, by the way, there's a 30 back money, money back guarantee. And you can have it for your whole life. All right? Anyway, see you guys later.